So welcome everybody to this webinar or welcome back for those who have followed the previous webinar. So I am Mathieu, an application chemist at Thales Nano and today's topic is the gas module and how you can use it to extend the scope of your reactions, of your flow reaction by introducing gaseous reagents. So let's go uh, through the plan of this presentation first. I'll first give you a short introduction and then a quick reminder of the continuous flow chemistry. We will then go uh, to the feature of the gas module and the advantage of uh, combining it with the H cube, for example, or extensively even with the uh, Phoenix flow reactor. So I will then show you uh, some examples of the chemistry performed by giving details about some reactions and results that has been done uh, with on those instruments. And I will finish uh, by showing you the setup in a real uh, laboratory environment before answering your questions. So please, uh, during all the presentation of this webinar, uh, feel free to send us your questions. So, uh, I'd like to give you a recap of the previous episodes. So, we, we talked about the H-Cube Mini Plus, which was the very first webinar we did, and then the H-Cube Pro, the big border of the H-Cube Mini Plus, I would say. Uh, we had one on the PhotoCube, uh, on the card cards also, Cat cards uh, to uh, we showed you uh, the different cartridges that can be used with our instruments and the catalyst. And the last one was about the Phoenix Jenny platform, so the um, scale up combination, I would say. So if you want to, to watch them, uh, please go on this link and you can register and um, check them out. So a few words about Thales Nano first. Uh, we are making laboratory reactors that chemists and chemical engineers can use to create new drugs, new aromas, new chemicals, or even new processes. So you can see here uh, some important figures and a picture of the HQ Pro, which was uh, one of the uh, winner of the R&D Top 100 Awards, along the hygiene. So let's have a quick look at our portfolio. So we have a, a wide range of instruments for all kinds of needs that can perform them different kinds of chemistry. So for really exothermic reactions, for example, ozonolysis, and so on, we have the ice cube, which can go down to minus 70 degrees. Um, then on the other side of the spectrum, we have the Phoenix flow reactor and the flash pyrolysis platform, which can go up to 1000 degrees Celsius. So you can see here the gas module, so what we are going to talk about today. And here it is in a combination with the H cube, so the same setup we are talking about uh, today. So uh, you can also here see the Egeni with the Phoenix flow reactor, the scale up uh, combination, and then I would say our last uh, product, or lastly born product, the uh, photocube to do photochemistry reaction. Okay, so a uh, quick reminder about the flow chemistry first. Uh, if you want uh, more detail about it, please refer to the uh, second webinar, I mean to um, all the webinar, but mostly the one about the HQ Pro, where we give like a quite thorough description of uh, what is flow chemistry. But I would like to um, give you like a 
I would say a short and simplified definition to, I hope, help you better picturing it. So it could be seen as an ongoing, as a moving mixture of materials and solvent uh, for uh, an ongoing, a continuous synthesis. So it is at the very least uh, a pump and, the react and a reactor, but it can be much more complex than that. It can have like uh, several pumps, several reactors, uh, mixers, back pressure regulator if you want to create, to build uh, pressure inside your flow system, uh, mass flow controllers if you'd like to inject gases into your system, and you can even have an automation to, um, to control all of this flow system and even a built-in uh, analytical tool if you'd like to monitor your reaction, your continuous reaction in real time. So eventually, it is three important parameters. So a residence time, which is basically the reaction time, uh, a temperature and a pressure control. Those are the physical parameters you can play with and fine tune in order to get better yield and selectivity of your reaction. So let's talk about the gas module now. So you can uh, inject gases uh, from 25 to 140 bars. So I mean in the cylinder, is it in the external source of gas. And then it can deliver to your system uh, up to 100 bars. So the flow rate uh, you, can, you can use is uh, between 0 and 100 normal milliliter per minute. So this um, is a, a mass flow controller you can control uh, directly uh, used for the gases in a continuous flow environment. So it's pre-programmed with 14 gases. So you can see here the list of those gases. So oxygen, uh, carbon monoxide, dioxide, ethylene, zinc gases, for example, to do hydroformylation, uh, methane, helium, hydrogen, nitrogen, and so on. Uh, it is versatile as it is compatible not only with the HQ Pro, but the Phoenix flow reactor, or like on its own, like I mean with any other flow system, it is easy to use, robust, and reliable. So now the gas module works uh, seamlessly with the HQ Pro, allowing like the 14 gases to be used at up to 100 bars. With the same touch screen device you would use to, uh, with, um, with the HQ Pro alone. So reactions such as Carbonylation or oxidation can now be performed uh, with the HQ Pro at the same high pressure and same high temperature, so up to 150 degrees with the HQ. So HQ Pro gas module combination provides you so a safer uh, reaction due to the small volume in a given time. Uh, so this is a characteristic actually inherent to flow chemistry. Still, there's no catalyst handlings as in the H2 Pro alone. An improved heat transfer and mixing, uh, a better selectivity because of the low residence time mainly, uh, fast reaction, so from seconds to minutes. If you compare it to batch, uh, it can go up to hours of reaction, even days in some cases. And uh, a wider range of reaction thanks to the gas-liquid-solid interaction. And uh, easy catalyst handling. So this catalyst handling is really easy uh, thanks to the cat card technology, which uh, so makes the catalyst remains in the cat card after the reaction. Uh, so, 
a green, another advantage, and a green advantage is using gaseous reagents over chemicals, reduces the workup and purification time. So let's talk about uh, chemistry now, and I'm going to give you a few examples. So even though as uh, H tube alone uh, could provide you the hydrogen, nothing stops you uh, to use the gas module to inject an external source of hydrogen. So in this study, it was done. Um, so a series of commercially available catalysts were studied uh, for the hydrogenation of limonene under mild reaction conditions. So from the comparison of those catalysts done under batch conditions, so the screening was done under batch, so uh, the platinum and ruthenium based catalysts showed a uh, highest selectivity towards the uh, uh, P1 menthine as compared as the palladium based uh, catalyst. So in particular, uh, the platinum on charcoal and platinum on alumina showed an excellent selectivity. Um, so even at high uh, substrate conversion, so more than 90%. So kinetic studies showed that platinum on charcoal can differentiate between the terminal and between the internal uh, double bonds. So in limonene under those mild reaction conditions. So the stability of platinum uh, on charcoal under those conditions allowed for the hydrogenation of limonene with almost a quantitative conversion, so 96% and a P1 menthine selectivity more than 87% that was maintained uh, for at least five hours on stream. So now let's talk about oxidation. Um, so here, uh, 0.1 molar of anise alcohol uh, was used in acetic acid and um, it was used to uh, selectively oxidize uh, to the corresponding aldehyde using an oxygen gas and a card card filled with a gold and titanium oxide catalyst. And the best conversion here was used, uh, was found at a temperature of 102 degrees, 47 bars and 0.9 milliliter per minute. So it is also worth saying that those conditions, I mean, those um, reaction parameters for the optimization were determined by a simplex algorithm. So it is an algorithm uh, built in the HQ Pro. So it's another feature of the HQ Pro, regardless it is combined with the gas module or used uh, as a stand alone. So now for the uh, second example of oxidation, uh, the oxidation of ethanol. So an improved selectivity compared to the batch synthesis could be achieved here at 150 degrees and 10 bars and reaching a conversion of 97%. Nevertheless, the highest selectivity of 65% has been achieved at 175 degrees. But if you compare it to batch, in batch it's 45%, so it's 20% more than uh, you would get in batch mode. Okay, I uh, said here I put the, um, the diagram and uh, the flow diagram and you can see so the cylinder and then the gas module here. So the flow line here with the mixer and the Phoenix uh, flow reactor is used here before the back pressure regulator and collecting your product. So now um, in this example, they use a gas module to inject oxygen for cleavage of different olefins. 
So they demonstrated the palladium catalyst oxidation of olefins into the carbonyl compounds. So low catalyst loadings, 0.1 molar here, provided moderate to excellent uh, product yields in a short reaction time, so 25 minutes uh, reaction time, residence time, sorry. So major um, advantage of the flow protocol actually is the ability to handle uh, pure oxygen under a process intensified condition, so in a safe and scalable manner. So here again, I put the flow setup. You can see the oxygen cylinder, the MFC. So this is where the gas module is. So the CAPE group uh, performed here a litiation uh, followed by a carboxylation of different uh, heterocycles and alkynes. So the gas module was used here to inject CO2 gas uh, to the organolithium intermediate. So with this method, they synthesize a carboxylic acid uh, within a reaction time of 3.5 seconds. So using uh, a low excess of organometallic base and a gaseous reagents to give a moderate uh, to good isolated yield. As you can see, it's between 40 and 80 percent here. So again, the diagram here show you the different liquid line here and uh, the gas line here, where the gas module is used to inject uh, CO2 here. Okay, the CAPE group again here, um, this time they decided to combine a Phoenix flow reactor, not a H cube, but a Phoenix flow reactor with the gas module and a carbon monoxide uh, cylinder. So they studied here the carbonylation of aryl chlorides using so CO gas under high temperature and high pressure conditions. And among uh, all the catalytic systems studied, so the palladium acetate uh, provided the best performance due to its high stability under those high conditions, so high temperature and high uh, pressure. So the flow protocols here use uh, five molar uh, um, catalyst loading. So Although uh, the loading is higher than in some batch conditions, the reaction time is, significant, is significantly reduced to only 16 minutes in flow um, compared to a longer reaction time nece necessary under the typical batch conditions. So an advantage uh, is in contrast uh, to operation within batch, here, there is no vapor phase or head phase in, in this flow system because uh, all the gas was dissolved in solution. And since um, a very low amount of uh, carbon monoxide, two to three equivalent only, has been used, it improved uh, the safety and potential scal scalability of this uh, synthesis. So here again, you can see the setup. So the carbon and monoxide cylinder with, you can get the gas module here. So you have the liquid line and a mixer. And after the mixer, you have the Phoenix flow reactor, which uh, was put here uh, before uh, the back pressure regulator and the collection of product at the end. So this last example is more for, I would say, the beauty of the synthesis as it is actually not a proper uh, multi-step synthesis. I mean by that, that although the steps are subsequent, they are um, not in the same continuous flow. 
But still, I would like to show you here the possibilities uh, to synthesize morphinoids and derivatives and perform, if not all, at least a part of the full synthesis in continuous flow. So the gas module has been used here independently from the H2 Pro in the first step here to inject uh, oxygen uh, to, uh, for this uh, end demethylation step. So the mechanism is actually pretty interesting as I mean I, I will let you uh, go and check into uh, the article but the acetyl group here is going to come here displacing the uh, end methyl group. So a uh, conversion of 96 to 97% uh, uh, has been achieved here. So okay, so this first step was done using the gas mode, the gas module to inject the oxygen here. So now the subsequent uh, step involved uh, H2 Pro. So it is. Uh, they took the same mixture and so with the HQ Pro in hydrogen mode and with less than one molar of palladium and alumina catalyst, they managed to quantitatively reduce uh, the double bond of the enone here, as you can see. So, um, so thank you for uh, having followed this uh, little presentation. But now before we, we go to the Q&A session, I'd like you to show the, the setup in the laboratory. So please follow me. Okay. okay, I am now in front of the setup. So for those who have seen the webinar about the H2 Pro, you can easily recognize the H2 Pro here, and this is the gas module. I think that's the first time you can see it for real in a laboratory environment. So first, I'll go briefly uh, through the description of the H2 Pro, briefly because it's already the subject of a whole webinar. So for those who want more detail about it, please check it out, we will put the link into the video description, but please wait uh, for the end of this one before watching this. So, it starts with the pump, HPLC pump, here, it always starts with the pump as you have to create the flow through the line. So, it aspirates uh, the solvent here through a two-way valve here, which allows you to decide between uh, the reactant and the washing solution. So it uh, creates a flow and goes to a first pressure sensor that gives you the pressure at the beginning of the light here. Then it goes to a gas liquid mixer here. Uh, it is either the hydrogen produced inside or the gas, like in that case, when you have connected the gas module, it's going to be the gas that will be injected at this point here, gas liquid mixer. And then it goes to a bubble detector. This bubble detector gives you the ratio of gas over liquid. You can monitor it, uh, you can monitor it on the interface of the H2 Pro. And then it goes to a first connection point here. This connection point allows you to, for example, bypass the heater here in case of, for example, uh, let's say you want to do a reaction at 300 degrees, so you would need to put uh, another heater, uh, like the Phoenix floor reactor, for example, and so you can use this connection point to bypass this heater, so it goes to the Phoenix floor reactor and it comes back later here, so you can bypass this heater. But, so let's talk about this heater, so I can open it since it's not started yet, so it's not heating, and I can show you the inside, and here it is. So you can see here, there's a cartridge, 
so the cat cut 70 millimeter. So at this point of the line, you have, if you are working with gas, of course, you have your three phases. You have uh, the solvent that is injected, injected by the pump here, the gas by the gas module, and the solid catalyst that will remain inside the cartridges here. So three phases here. So closing it. And let's continue the description of the line. So it comes out from here and it goes to the second connection point I already told you about. And then it goes to a second pressure sensor here. So the difference between the two pressure sensors gives you the pressure drop you would experience in the card cart. And then it goes to a back pressure regulator here, uh, which creates the pressure through all the system, from the pump uh, to this back pressure uh, regulator. And then it goes to a Another two ways valve, in the same way as the first one, but to either collect your product or just send the solution to waste. So here was the description of the H cube. But now, um, let's say you want instead of hydrogen produced inside, you'd like to play with more with other gases like carbon dioxide, monoxide, methane, ethane, and there's up to uh, 13 gases pre-programmed. So you can, and you can do it quite easily by connecting the gas module, which is here. So now, um, the same way we went to the, uh, through the liquid line, I'm going to go to, through the uh, gas line here. So it starts with a cylinder. You, you cannot see it here as it is like outside the, the field of the camera, but you have to have a cylinder in order to connect it to the gas module and inject your gas. So you, have, you must have a reducer at your cylinder because the gas module can go up to uh, 140 bars from the cylinder. And then your gas inside the gas module pass through the mass flow controller, which uh, allows you to play between 0 and 100 milliliter per minute of flow rate, normal milliliter per minute. And then it comes out uh, from the back of the gas module, and maybe you cannot really see it here, but this stainless tubing in which the gas is going to the back of the HQ Pro and then it's going to be mixed with your liquid as I said at this point, the gas liquid mixer on the HQ Pro. So it's either the use of the hydrogen uh, produced inside or the gas. So if you connect the gas module then it disables the uh, produce of the hydrogen inside. So, there's two modes in this um, gas module. First, there's a standalone mode um, in which you can um, provide a flow rate to any flow setup, I would say. Not especially the H2 Pro, but any other flow setup you would have made. So for this, you would uh, control the different parameters. So you would select the gas, uh, you would put the pressure, uh, you would set the pressure, and you would uh, set the flow rate directly with those buttons here. With those three buttons to select the values and the parameters. But right now, if I'm pushing them, it does not nothing. But you can see on the little screen, I hope, uh, this is like the control mode. So that means it's connected to the extra pro because I connected it with a CAN cable that is passing behind. And this cable allows it to control only from the interface of the 
Escapro. So you can here recognize the mental for the settings of the HQ Pro parameters, but first thing first, let's go and detect the uh, gas module. It is in the external tab here, and first you have to click scan. And by clicking this button, it's going to scan every instrument, Thales Nano instruments that are connected to the HQ Pro via CAN cable. So it's not only the gas module, but can be the Phoenix flow reactor, uh, the cap car changer, and so on. But right now, only the gas module is connected. So it has detected the gas module, and there's a second tab that appears when you detect for the first time. So this is a tab that allows you to set up all uh, the different parameters, but for the gas module only. For the uh, H2 Pro parameters, it's going to be in the main type. I will show you in a bit. But first, let's set up the parameters for the gas module. So first, you have uh, the gas selection, and which allows you to play with like 13 gases here. There's a list. So for, for us right now, it's just nitrogen. And then you have like different information, you can recognize the cylinder here. So you have the pressure that is detected uh, in the cylinder. So don't forget to uh, open the valve of the reducer at the cylinder and it will show the uh, pressure you delivered from the cylinder. So then you have to select the flow rates you would like to inject into into your flow line in the H cube. So it can be like in different units, but for us, let's keep it like a milliliter per minute. So you can modify it, change the exact same way you, you would change the pressure temperature on the, on the main tab. Then you have an indication of pressure inside the MFC and here at the outlet and right now you have your gas here so it's not injecting yet because I didn't push start in the main tab so you have here a little panel that tells you the different uh, parameters you've set for the HQ so see it's pretty simple so now we've set uh, the parameters for the gas module so let's go back into the main tab. There it is. And for those who have followed the, this webinar for the H2 Pro, I already went into detail of this. But yeah, here you can put the temperature of the heater, uh, the pressure of your system, the flow rate here, and the different switch. You can see here, there's a hydrogen which is uh, disabled. It is because you have connected the gas module, so it's going to inject a gas instead of hydrogen. You can either decide to inject one or the other. So when you've set all your parameters, let's say we have set up all of those, let's click Start and then save reaction parameter, I don't save, but you have to know uh, you can save them if you'd like to uh, load them um, faster the next time, if you are repeating a reaction, for example, it's quicker. So now uh, it's going to take a few minutes to, for everything to build up, for the temperature to reach, for the pressure and for the uh, temperature, uh, for the pressure inside the gas module to build up as well and to inject. And so when uh, everything will be stabilized, you could then start your reaction by pressing, uh, by changing the switch here from your solvent line to your reactant. So um, now it's time to answer your question. 
So please don't hesitate to send your question about this setup, about the gas module or even the H2 Pro. And I, I would be happy to answer them right now. Uh, maybe in the, uh, in the meantime, the first question comes up. So I can just go and describe you uh, a bit of more tabs. Um, so the tabs are pretty much the same as when you use the H2 Pro alone, but there's like a, just a couple of difference. So this is the main tab. So on the info tab, you have um, different informations, uh, but actually half of them concern the hydrogen. So here you are not using the hydrogen, but the gas. So you can see like some values would be zero, but you can still see like, for example, the indication of the pressure, the temperature, uh, even the valve opening, uh, the gas liquid ratio. And yeah, here uh, your amount of H2, uh, it's grayed out. It's grayed out because you cannot uh, use it as you are using uh, the H2 with the gas module, so the gas line is open and not the hydrogen line. So, um, yeah, uh, important point here. So, you have to know, like, when you, when you are using it in, in a standalone mode, I mean the H2, so you have the pressure hydrogen automatically instead. But in our case, we have to change it to put the pressure at the outlet of the gas module if you want to monitor the uh, pressure of the gas you delivered. And then you can follow the pressure. Yeah. Then you have the event. Uh, again, it's to follow the different status, uh, different events, uh, your H2 Pro and the gas module as well, because you have both that appeared here. So you have the log tab, which allows you to load um, previous experiments, and the service, which is for, as it says, service purpose, and which allows you to follow the uh, if you have errors, for example. And then the external tab we already talked about. So, of course, if you want more details about all those different tabs, it is more detailed in the webinar just for, for the HQ Pro. But right now, I think I showed you all uh, information that was important for controlling the H2 Pro with the gas module. So that's all for the description of the setup. So now let's go through the question.